to really transform itself um, to become applicable to the consumer, the student, and thinking about the student as a consumer. And Naira and I also share some things in common, a, a love of good, good music. I started off as a, in the radio business uh, when I was 17, and music still plays a very important part of my life. Um, and you know, we both have a mission to, to make you know, learning more engaging and inspiring with um, digital content. So my background, as you heard, is um, radio and then entertainment. I spent four years working at Virgin, um, joined, worked for a gentleman you may have heard called Ted Turner, <laughs> and we launched a channel you may have heard of called Cartoon Network. Um, so I was responsible for that for 10 years, overseeing that sort of business, which was kind of cool. Taking the Hanna-Barbera Library and creating Papoff Girls, Texas <laughs> Laboratory, Johnny Bravo, and all of that cool stuff. And then um, uh, I had the great fortune of joining the Walt Disney Company um, back in the day. And um, uh, Disney wasn't in a great place, not many people remember this, but 15, 18 years ago, um, Disney's stock price was 15 bucks. And there was a lot of lot of um, in, in investor um, um, troubles, and uh, there was a gentleman called Bob Iger, who's written a really good book. He was my boss for 15 years, and we set about transforming the company. And I did that, and I had a real interest and passion around learning, and um, had decided to retire. I had two sons who'd gone through um, uh, NYU. They went to. Gallatin, NYU, and I um, was happily enjoying retirement when I got a call to join the board of Pearson. So I joined Pearson as a board member just over a year ago, and they were looking for a CEO. There was a pandemic on. <laughs> I had nothing else to do. And I thought, this is kind of cool, and maybe we'll dig into this, because I also saw a lot of parallels between the disruption that had happened in the media industry and the disruption that's about to happen and is happening, and the pandemic's acted as an accelerant, in the, in the space of learning. Um, so that's, that's a bit about me and, and, you know, we've been on this journey. Um, last week we launched Pearson Plus, uh, which is a, a, a different way of, of, of uh, allowing students affordable um, uh, to, to access our our, our textbooks and study aids and everything like that in a, an affordable way. It's, it's got a really great reception. We utilized over 2,000 students in terms of developing it, but it's really just the, the start of um, uh, what we see as becoming a digital ecosystem. Very cool. It's very cool. Well, we'll, we'll see. We're, we're, we're starting <laughs> off. Um, and, and you are building a, you know, a real community as a STEM role model. Um, and I thought, you know, between us, um, we can, um, you know, share some insights. So let's, if I may, start with your good self. <laughs> um, so there are hundreds of STEM influencers, you know, on social media, but you've carved out a particular niche with aerospace. You know, what's it about your content that is really resonating? I would definitely say that at this current moment, science and social justice are both having a moment and are becoming a lot more talked about in mainstream media. Um, and I think the overlap between those two, having a black STEM role model has become a lot more poignant in this time. And um, I'm always amplifying other black STEM role models and obviously sharing my own journey for the purpose of inspiring, but I think the overlap between those two conversations has definitely resonated with a lot of people. Um, another core, or one of the core uh, pillars of my platform is authenticity. So I don't just share the ups of what I do, I like to share the, the failures, the hardships, the shortcomings, um, because my goal is to be relatable and tangible. And I think that always resonates with people because they think that they can't do what I do because say they failed a class. Well, I failed the class. Uh, say they are not good at math. I used to suck at math. <laughs> and now I'm an aerospace engineer getting a PhD, and so um, I think those are the two things that have really um, sold the deal for a lot of people to not just follow me, but to engage with me, to learn from me too. So that was really your motivation, 
to, to sort of start, you know, posting your videos and everything like that, was to kind of show your true authentic self. Absolutely. And the journey in that it takes because instead, I can't mentor everybody individually, so it's always very nice to be able to make a video about what I do. So people can follow along, say, oh, I want to do this too, or maybe I don't want to do this, or she got this fellowship, maybe I should apply for it. No, so. oh, it's really, really cool. And, and tell us a bit about the actual process, because, you know, there are literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people trying to become, you know, social influencers. You know, what, how, you know, how do you go about that process to ensure you kind of rise to the top and maybe talk a bit about the algorithms and, and all that good stuff? Sure. I would say the process is, for me, is you have to bring something unique. I mean, if you try and go into look like everybody else and do what everybody else does, you'll fall into those same mundane kind of circles. But I think the more that you set yourself apart by tapping into what makes you you, the more authentic and, and more engaging audience you can garner to your content. Yeah, and, and, and a bit about, you know, I found this, as we had a, a brief chat before, and I found this stunning in terms of, you get feedback by the second on everything you're posting, and tell, tell our friends here how long you have to resonate with your audience. Great question. So I'll take it back to TikTok, if you guys know what that is. I'm a Gen Zer, so I'm very well versed. <laughs> um, but TikTok actually has one of the most valuable features I've seen a social media platform use, and that's within the analytics, where you can see how long people are actually staying on your video. So if you see a spike at like two seconds of a 30 second video, that means you lost people's attention after two seconds. And then in that case, you know, to improve, you need to work on capturing your audience better in those first two seconds. Um, you know, attention spans are small. Social media is very instantly gratifying. And if you're not interesting, people just scroll, scroll, scroll. And so that's one thing I've had to very keep, keep in mind when I make my content. Yeah, and, and I find this really interesting because of Pearson, we're really starting to put the consumer at the heart of everything that we do. And when I joined the company, I started referring to learners and students as consumers, and I have to admit, I got some pushback um, because it's like, no, they're students or faculty, and I said, everyone's a consumer, right. and we're a, we're you know bringing some of my old world into the new world. It was, it was, it was kind of in my new role was thinking of you know everything we did at Disney was thinking about you put the consumer at the heart of, of, of everything you do. Now you also like to get really creative. Yes. Yeah, with the things you do in, in pop culture. Talk a bit about some of the creative um, examples that you've used. Absolutely. So my audience is mainly people my age and younger. So uh, Gen Z, what do we all know? And it's memes, it's viral videos, it's, um, you know, kind of the staples in, in movies and TV shows. So I like to build my content off of what's already popular and what's already being talked about. And so for an example, um, my work is in electric propulsion, which is um, basically electric rocket propulsion. And it's like a space rocket. And it actually looks very, very similar to the rockets that are, are the propulsion systems they use in Star Wars. Has anybody <laughs> heard of TIE fighters? Exactly, they look exactly like that. So it's a lot more sensationalized in Star Wars, but um, they are real and that's what I work on. And so I did make a TikTok video, which they can roll now, about the Star Wars TIE fighters. Are you a Star Wars fan? Have you ever seen those ion engines they fly around with? Why did I tell you they were real? They are. And I'm actually working on this for my PhD. Ain't she gorgeous? <laughs> so you're just gonna leave out that they produce baby amounts of thrust and like are nowhere near as fast as they are in Star Wars? You and my business? Anywho, yes, they're real. However, they do take a lot of time to accumulate to high speeds. That's because they do produce a very, very, very small amounts of thrust. But they're really, really pretty, and sometimes you can make them turn purple because of the type of propellant you use, and I really love purple, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty. Really, 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 really. So you see, two seconds to get someone's attention, otherwise you're just a swipe away, and it's making pretty content like that. Thank you. Really cool. Absolutely. So, um, I think that's a great segue into what you do, since you do have a history and a background within entertainment. 
So I would love to know, do you think that education will ever catch up to what students actually use on the day-to-day -day basis, like Spotify, Netflix, and YouTube? Well, I think that what attracts me to the sector was not only just a personal passion for the impact that learning has on society, and I, I think we should never lose sight of that, particularly at this moment in time. I think that's really important. But I went through, you know, a couple of you know, disruptive moments in, in the entertainment space. Firstly, uh, I use the music analogy a lot because I think it's very relevant to, to, to the world of education. If you think of the evolution of music and you think of a vinyl record with 12 tracks on it, morphed into the digital version, which was a CD with 12 tracks on it. And then you had um, MP3, Napster, and the ability for consumers to vote to get the 12 track, uh, the single songs they wanted rather than pay the bundle of the 12 tracks. Steve Jobs looked at a 99 cent store and went, maybe people will pay 99 cents for a song, iTunes, and now that has evolved into an access model um, where you don't need to own music. And in fact, consumers increasingly in our lives, we will pay for access over ownership. And so you, you pay 9.99, 11.99 a month, or whatever it is, for 40 million songs on Spotify. Right. And I see that same evolution, and in fact, Pearson Plus is an access model. Um, so for 14.99, you can have our entire access to our entire library, um, and then we'll build build functionality uh, beyond that. Um, and and I see also the other interesting aspect is. By making everything digital, and it kind of fits into, into your world, we can actually start to sort of decompose, just as it happened in music with the albums and songs, you know, what a textbook is, and actually take it all apart and think of it in a much more modular form. And this has a couple of interesting aspects because it will impact learning. And the way that we teach or faculty teach is, is I think, really, really important. It also allows us to provide really robust and, and sincere learning experiences at a very affordable price. It's what I call the sachet. In the, you know, we're also we, we, we're moving into a consumer products world. People don't like me sometimes to talk about that, but it is. You know, Pearson Plus is a consumer product. And if you look at the FMCG world, and we've got to think of learning and the world of education through these lenses. Um, if you go to India, Africa, Asia, you don't buy a bottle of shampoo because it costs too much of an individual's disposable income. Right. You buy a sachet. So I ask ourselves internally, how, what do you create in terms of sachet of learning? That sachet of toothpaste, that sachet of shampoo. How can, we now have the digital tools to be able to do that. Very cool. So essentially you're trying to leverage kind of like bite-sized learning that people can do on the go and it's a lot more convenient in such a fast-paced kind of society that we have. Yeah, I mean, you know, talking to um, you know, your friends at TikTok, for, for example, you take an average, you know, one of the features we put into Pearson Plus is the audio feature because we heard back from students, they want to listen to their books, they want to read their books, sure. and they want to listen to their books at double speed. Because time is precious to you, as you well know, and, and therefore, if I can, you know, do twice, you know, the same amount of work in half the time while I'm multitasking or I'm at the gym or whatever, then that's what I'm going to do. You know, one of the features I was talking to a, a UCLA professor who said her students demanded that all of her lectures were still recorded, and the reason was the students wanted to be able to play back the lecture at double speed. So a 60 minute lecture, actually they can get through it in 30 minutes. And then to, to TikTok, you think about how much information is actually in a 60 minute lecture. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes of real <laughs> re relevant information, maybe 10 of you. you know, what happens if you made 10 60 second module, modular episodes that fits into the lifetime, that you, you know, the lifestyle that, that, that um, you follow? I think all of these are really, really interesting areas as, as the, 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 the sector of education and learning gets, gets disrupted. Very cool. And so do you think that education will ever catch up to the entertainment industry? I, I, I believe it, it, it has to. Mm -hmm. Because one of the, you know, the, the, I think there are, 
The other reason about focusing on the consumer is we have to think about everything being consumer grade. So, you know, the design of Pearson Plus, for example, is designed the user interface that it is as good as a TikTok or a Spotify. You know, we brought in illustrations. We brought this great illustrator that we found actually through Instagram, um, who's an Indian who lives in Peru and has this community of illustrators because we want to bring personality yes. to Pearson Plus and, and have everything that we do be, be of consumer grade and, you know, learning experiences themselves can use gamification, can use, you know, all of the skills and, and tools that have been deployed thus far in um, music and, and media and entertainment. That's really smart and I see that even within kind of the PhD journey like the more aesthetically pleasing you can make presenting data, it actually hits home or it, uh, it's a lot more understandable for your audience. And so I'm having to leverage artists to actually help me visualize very technical data. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think the way that you put your, your, your pieces, your videos together is, is phenomenal. They are works of art in very concise, every, literally every second counts. Right. And I think we've got to bring some of that discipline to um, uh, you know the world of learning, so that we remain relevant. You know, if whether it's Pearson or anyone, if as soon as you become irrelevant, then you know consumers in today's world, we see it in many many sectors, will move on to something else. And and certainly, I, I don't want us to be complacent um, as a company. I really want us to to um, uh, you know have momentum and think, think um, around, you know, you're going to see Pearson evolve to become essentially a digital media learning company. Sure. Yeah, that's the way we're going. Right. And I guess finally, my last question is, what do you think education could learn from the celebrity creator culture in Hollywood? It's really interesting. I mentioned earlier, you know, at the heart of Disney is intellectual property. Mm -hmm. At the heart of Pearson is intellectual property. That's created by talent, talented screenwriters, and then it's got directors and producers and actors that would bring that, that narrative to the consumer. We have talented faculty, talented authors, researchers, students, and we need to, we need to nurture that talent um, and make sure that, that they are treated in a similar way and promoted in a similar way. Also because, as we're seeing in a world that we, have, we live in today, having that unbiased um, approach to learning has never been more important, as I mentioned, to a, uh, from a societal impact. So I really think that, um, you know, and we're investing in, in a lot in our, our, our authors and, and our relationships with faculty and institutions as they go through this journey with us. Uh, to make sure that they get the support that they need, that they get the promotion that they need, that, that we are helping drive them into creating the next form of content. Absolutely. You know, thinking around the areas, as you're talking about, using algorithms and using AI, the gamification, you know, um, all, all of these things that we're experiencing in the rest of our lives, we need to bring to Pearson and we need to bring to the world of learning, I think, think generally. Absolutely. So, you know, we talked a bit about, you know, how you study the performance of your content and, and, and what you've been learning, and you, you mentioned this. How do you see your world evolving? How do you, how, you know, what is, here's a question that we hadn't rehearsed or, or talked about, was what do you see on the horizon in terms of where, you know, because ultimately you're not just a consumer, you are a learner and a student, What's important to you in your, in your life? Definitely education in the way that it's palatable to me. Like, and I'm also very interested in creating um, education and knowledge and even the things that I make on my TikTok. I like for it to be digestible by the broader community. And so I think that's where we're heading. Like TikTok has actually, I think is leading the way with that, with the learn on TikTok hashtag that has been leveraging so many talented content creators to create these really educational TikToks on so many different topics. You can learn pretty much anything. It's becoming like a little YouTube. Um, Cause YouTube, there's like YouTube University. 
So I think we're already headed in that direction, and I see us just going further down that path um, and creating just more digestible content for the broader community. Yeah, I think what's fascinating about TikTok is the functionality that it provides, the split screen. Yes that is now being utilized in education and learning and the green screen functionality. Yes. And then you start to think about how do I deliver a lesson in 60 seconds or less right. and start to make that episodic. Totally starts to transform the way that you think about delivering learning at scale and, and uh, uh, um, at an affordable price. And without all the jargon too, because so many of us walk around only being able to communicate to each other within our fields, but learning how to make content for the broader community, you start to break down a lot of what you're doing, and you understand it better, and you're able to communicate it much better too. Yeah, well I really have enjoyed the last 20 minutes with you, and uh, please do, do follow Naya. Um, you know, you've got a quick sample of some of the videos, it's really, really fantastic. As I mentioned, um, you can also um, catch Naya uh, on Learn This, um, which is uh, you know, an interesting take. You know, the first, tell um, the audience a little bit about the first episode. Sure, so the first episode is tackling sustainability within the clothing industry and how we as consumers can help guide the clothing industry into more environmentally friendly uh, practices. And so um, choosing what you shop to be you know, more sustainable, reusing your own clothes instead of buying more you know, additional clothing. Um, it's tackling those topics with our resident expert, who is Maya Penn, who's a very, very um, talented um, environmentalist. And so it's really exciting and really informative. Yeah, and it makes you think, yes. which I think is really, really important. Anyway, thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you. Um, and enjoy the rest of your time.